Today's message I've entitled The Language of God. Language and communication is quite a challenge, would you agree? Uh, just, just, just communicating. Uh, I've often said to people, I know what I'm saying, but I don't know what you're hearing. And that's called communication breakdown if you don't find out. Uh, you got the way a man thinks, the way a woman thinks. Now all of us men know that we think the right way. But, you know, uh, thanks, Rod. <laughs> but you've got men and women, you've got children, the way they think. Uh, and, and, and it's very confusing how people think. And uh, not only that, I was having a look at our English language. You know, people from other countries have told me the English language is very difficult to learn. And it starts with our spelling. You have a look at this, right? Ear is E-A-R. You all know that, right? Now put a B in front of it. It's not beer, it's bear. bear. Who would have thought? Now you're going you're to try to learn this. You're in another country and they go, okay, so ear is E-A-R. <coughs> bear is B-A-R. No, no, B-E-A-R. Really? All right. Now add a D to that and you don't get bed, you get beard. How's this? This is our English language. Communication is not easy. Uh, language is not easy. And uh, uh, it, it, what's the last one here? If you get bear and change the B to an F, you don't get fair, you get fear. Oh, my goodness. How's anybody... Meant to, and now, of course, we have a Bible that is written in Hebrew and Greek, and now we're going to translate that to this sort of English. You can imagine there are challenges. You ever felt a challenge reading the Bible, and you've gone, "Well, hang on, there's this translation, and there's that one." Who's ever thought that and thought, "Hang on, that verse, what's going on there?" And we, we want to understand the language of God. Uh, the re do, do you read the Bible to, just as a storybook? I was talking to uh, an editor of a publishing uh, company one day. And this editor said, I said, have you ever read the Bible? She said, yes. And I said, what did you think? She said, it, has, it is the weightiest book I have ever read. I said, did you read it cover to cover? She said, actually, no. She said, and I edit books for a living. I read the Bible and, and I got stuck about halfway through. And that's true. The, the Bible is a weighty book. And uh, there are people that just never read their whole, the whole Bible. I was interested to see a testimony of a lady who went to her pastor and she said, I'd like to read the whole Bible from cover to cover. And the pastor said, I'll give you a reading program and I'd like to walk through the Bible with you and answer your questions as you go. She was so thrilled by that. So as she was reading, she said she came to a point where she was thrilled because she had read the whole Bible from cover to cover. Now she knew the Bible was right, that it was God's word. And this is what she said, I knew the Bible was true. I should have been elated, but I was heartbroken. By the time I had finished reading the Bible cover to cover, I was heartbroken and I didn't like him anymore. She went to her pastor and she confessed I've, I've done everything you've asked me to do. I've read the Bible, every book, every page. And pastor, I've got to tell you something. I must confess, I don't like God anymore because I've read the Bible. And the pastor said to her the following. I can see the questions that you've been asking and I can see the kinds of things that you're looking for. Remember, he'd walked through the Bible with her. And I know the lens you are reading scripture through. My challenge for you is this. Read it again. 
and stop looking for yourself and start looking for God. Start looking for what he loves. Start looking for what he hates. Start looking for what motivates him. Start looking for why he does what he does. You're reading the book as if it's about you. It's written for you, but it's not about you. It's about God. Follow this. And so she began to follow her pastor's instructions. And she began to read the Bible. A Bible that would be, yes, the word of God, but not about her, but about God. She got halfway through the Old Testament. She came to her pastor and she said these words, I fell in love with God. She started to learn the language of God. And so is the title of this message today, The Language of God. You see, the Word of God is not about you. It's for you. And when you start with that as your premise, then the Word of God will make a whole lot more sense. It'll change its dynamic within you. You see, Daniel in the lion's den was about God. How was it about God? It was about God's faithfulness. You read that story. You want to go throwing yourself into a lion's den? You think that's about you, do you? Really? Okay. You want to go down to Taronga Park Zoo in Sydney and just sort of break in and go wandering through the lions? Is this what you want to do? You always thought it was about you. So go ahead. Rock. No, 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 no. This was about God's. What was it about? God's faithfulness. You see, the language of the Bible is the language of God. About God. It's about God. In John 14, 27, we read that Jesus said these words, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. And you thought that was about you. <laughs> Didn't you? That's what you thought. Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? It really does. You read it, it's all about me. Well, it's for you, but it's not about you. Have a look at what it says ahead of this. Ahead of this, because this is why <laughs> we've got to read things in context. In fact, you would not need to read things in context as much. You should, but as much if you realised the Bible is about God. Because then your whole thinking, your understanding, your perspective would be in the right way. John 14, 25. So what, what's the verse we just read? Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. What's it about? Well, John 14, 25 says, These things I have spoken to you while being present. This is the verse before. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things... And bring to your remembrance all things that I said. Why is that about God? It's about God because this verse and the following one is not about you praying for peace. How many times have you prayed for peace? Dear God, give me peace. Well, hang on. If you read that and you understand it's about God, you'll understand that when you received Christ, you received Emmanuel What's that mean? God with us. The language of God is that you received peace when you received the Holy Spirit. Because he is the author of peace. You received strength, dunamis power when you received him. Why? Because he is. Because he is. Oh my goodness. I was sharing with you just last week about the Ukrainian Christians when the Russians came in and the Christians said there's just one name on our heart and on, my, on our mind and that is Emmanuel, God with us. It, of course, when Moses 
ask God, whom shall I say sent me? Moses understood that God was known by many names. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. That whom shall I say? God said to Moses, I am that I am, or I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, what did he say? I am has sent you. In Hebrew, now I'm not very good with speaking Hebrew. I'm pretty good with English. (laughs) But the Hebrew gets me. Ayer, asher, ayer means I am all sufficient God. All sufficient God has sent me. All I am who I am. It's about me. I'm all sufficient God. Pharaoh with your great big army, all sufficient God has sent me. You want to keep us in bondage? That's your problem because all sufficient God has sent me. The language of God is to say, if you know him and understand the word of God is about him and you know him, you will understand your source of supply. It's always about him. Now, you look at the byproducts byproduct might be healing. Well, that's what he does. Uh, Miracles, that's what he does. But he is all sufficient supply. He is God. And when we read his word, this is part one, I should say, in a two-part series on the language of God. So you want to get the next one next week. This is a breakthrough for people because now you understand there's no contradiction in the Word of God. This is all about God. This is all about Him. And there are many times you will read the Bible and if you read it that you think it's about you, then you might not like Him because He says some things in there and you go, I don't like that. Oh, well, you're getting to know who I am then. It's about me, says the Lord. And you might like some things about me, you might not like some things about me, but this is me. And I love you. You see, we saw last week when somebody says, tell me why you love me, then you you got yourself a bit of a problem going on because now if they tell you why they love you, they've really given you a benchmark, something that you have to rise to every time. And God would just simply say, there is no reason for why I love you. I just do. Because I am love. And I love you. Now I might love some things about you, says the Lord. And I do. You see, the language of God is that his commandments are not to be an arbitrary restriction in our lives. Upon us. The commandments of God are exposing himself to us so that we might understand these things are about him. When he says, when he says, I'll see if you're getting the point. When he says, thou shalt not steal, how is that about him? Because God does not steal. When he says, thou shalt not covet, what does he, what, why? Because that, he, he, he will not covet. When God talks about faithfulness, why is that about him? Because God is faithful. And so it's those things about him. When we understand the word of God and the language of God is from him, through him and to him, we understand what Emmanuel is all about. Can you receive something there? (coughs) And you begin to understand that love is an adjective where God describes his love to us. But it is a verb when 
it becomes an action word to us that we might follow, that we might understand when he said in John 14, 15, if you love me, obey my commandments. It's about him. Worship is about him. Not about how we feel, not about even how we think. There are many times husbands and wives will not have a nice day with each other that day. They might not even like each other that day. But it doesn't matter whether sometimes you like God or not. There are some times you might not. A scary thing to say, isn't it, from a pulpit? For there are some times in my life I have misunderstood God and I have said, Lord, I don't know if I like you today. I don't understand you today. And I would feel him say to me, my ways are not your ways. Learn my ways. Read my word. Not about you, but about me. You see, we've read the promises of God are about us. And they're not about us, they're about God. When you understand his nature and his character and his personage, then you understand it was and is always about God. Now we can read in the Bible an understanding that perhaps may now reveal what this passage means. Have a look with me. What does this mean? Romans 8, 28, when he says, All things work together for good. Did you think this was about you? Did you? Really? Well, you want to read it again. You want to read again. This everything, when we come into that place of recognising I've been invited to a table with God not because what I have done or not done but because he is God. Wow. I will sit at the table set before me. And he said, I set, who, who sets the table? I set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God, you set the table before me. Can I go and get the tablecloth? No, you don't need to. Well, Lord, if it's a table and it's, it's dinner, maybe I could bring the drinks. I didn't ask you to bring anything. Well, Lord, you know, maybe I could contribute some finances to this dinner. Why are you, why are you doing that? It's about me, says the Lord. I will set the table before you in the presence of your enemies. Now sit down at my table. You are invited. Enjoy the presence of your father. And we go, really? So it's all about you? Yes, it's all about me. The thief on the cross realised that. When he got to heaven for no other good reason than he just simply said, will you remember me? And Jesus invited him to glory. Wow. It really is all about you, Lord. And when we humble ourselves and realise it's not about my greatness, it's about his. When we realise, yes, I can be faithful, I should be faithful because he is faithful. And I will learn, you are my measure, you are my staff, you are my patience, you are my love, you are my joy, you are my obedience, you are everything in me. And Lord, I surrender. And when you read this in Romans chapter 8, and we know that all things work together for good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Oh my goodness, how many times have people preached this all about me? Hey, brother, sister, it's going to work out good because that's God's promise in his word. All about you. It's all about you. And they've mishandled this passage really poorly. It's, it's awful because when you understand it, you begin to realise something. He says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. And then, of course, you've got the predestinationists out there saying, you see, you don't have any will left because God's predestined you. Oh, goodness, can you read the whole thing properly, please? It's not... A, okay, let me try it one more time. It's not about you. Who's it about? God. Glenda's... See, Bible school over there. Very, very intelligent woman. You can follow her. She's, she's right. Whom he conformed, he conformed to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among many. And so these two verses here, verse 28 and 29, 
all things work together for good. What's he talking about? Every situation in my life works together for good for me to be conformed to the image of Christ. It's about the image of Christ there again. Oh, Lord, everything's going to work together for good. What are you talking about? Well, I know. This bad thing happened and that bad thing happened. It's all going to turn out for good. What are you talking about? Well, Lord, what do you, th what do you think that passage means? Well, it's going to turn out for good. Yes, it's going to turn out for you to be conformed to the image of my son. Oh, is that what you mean by good? Yep. Oh. Oh. So it's not about... No, it's not about that. It's about being conformed to the image of my son because when you stop thinking about you and you start thinking it's about me, that means my peace will be full within you. That means my strength will prevail against your enemies. That means you will think and you will want to obey my commandments because you will know who I am. You will understand me, says the Lord. Wow. So I can overcome. He says, yes, keep going. Because why? Because greater is he that is in you. Once again, says the Lord, it's not about you. It's about me. Wow. And then we read in 1 Corinthians. Do you like that we read a lot of Bible in our church? Yeah. yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. See, God already knows you. He's already done what he has to do for you. So when you're praying for someone, guess who it's not about? <laughs> it's not about your prayer. Pray, yes, pray. But it's not about how good you pray. It's that you prayed to God because it's all about him. When you understand the sovereignty of God, you'll be able to say, thy will be done. And the person that does not understand God and does what make, makes it all about themselves, God would look at that person and say, okay, thy will be done. And you don't want to be that person. You want to be that person that can place, you say, and understand the language of God. And now my hope and prayer is that the word of God will come more alive. Where you have read in the past and been confused about so many different subjects, even in the Bible. Remember Peter said to Jesus, would you please speak plainly? Do you remember that part? Because Jesus was saying a whole heap of parables. And it came to a place where even Peter realised in Acts chapter 2, it was about the Spirit of God. It was about him and not me. Because here's the wonderful thing about God. His sole interest is you. Jesus prayed that prayer, didn't he? He prayed in John chapter 17. Now I pray that the, not only for these alone, but also, also for those who will believe, who will believe me through their word. So he was saying now the disciples are going to go out and they're going to preach the word, they're going to preach the gospel. And I'm praying for all of those that come in. And his prayer was about you, that they will be one. One mind, one spirit, one goal, one purpose. That we would understand Jesus, we would understand the Father, we would understand the Holy Spirit, we would understand this God, this Emmanuel, this I am all sufficient God. And that we would not worry about the politics of church anymore, who's in charge or who's not in charge. We would not be concerned about those things, whether we read from a hymnal or we have a data projector. We would not be concerned so much even about the songs we sing. We would definitely not be concerned about entertainment. We would not be concerned about whether or not our brother... Can you imagine a brother or sister, a Christian in other words, who really makes it all about God? Do you think that, that you can hurt them emotionally anymore? Do you really... Do, all of a sudden they've got an armour on because you can, you can say horrible things to them 
You see, most people that walk around hurt, I'm not saying all people, I'm saying most people that walk around hurt are ones that made everything about themselves and not about him. Paul the Apostle made it clear, so did the other disciples, that they wanted it to be more about him and less about me, that he might increase, that I might decrease. Do you remember that? I want to decrease, Lord, that you might increase. And you will find victory, not because it's about you, but God is a victorious God. God don't fail. But what if I fail, Lord? Would you stop making it about you for three minutes, says the Lord? But Lord, I'm scared. You know, I'm going to get this through to you soon. But Father, I'm worried about what might happen. I'm waiting because I'm not worried, says the Lord. I'm not afraid. I'm not dismayed. I'm not concerned. Why are you making it about you? Well, because that's how I feel. Do you want victory? Yes, I do. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path straight. Can you receive that? Now, this is just part one. Let me read this last verse out to you. I do not pray these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may know, that you be that may believe that you sent me. Brothers and sisters, the language of God is all about God from our perspective. From his perspective, <laughs> it's all about you. Yeah, what, 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 what greater love is anyone that they would die for, for a friend? You see, if we start reading the word of God as from today, and we realise it is about him. Yes, it's for you, but it's all about him. Your perspective on God is going to change. All of a sudden, you won't be rising up. I mean, why do I need, why do I need to worry about what they call spiritual warfare that most Christians have got no idea what it is? The best spiritual warfare you can get into is doing good. Why? Because that's what God does. That's what God does. What would God do? What would Jesus do? If we make it about God and less about me, then we'll have that breakthrough. Can you receive that word today? Well, this has got nothing on next week's sermon, so you've got to come for next week. I have been around for too long to see Christians complaining about everything else because they misunderstand the language of God. We've got to stop. We get confused by English. We can't spell right. The Americans spell different to us. We spell different to them. Uh, we've got different accents. Wouldn't you look if, you know, Jesus turned up and said good day? Well, I hope he does. That would be beautiful for us Australians. But the truth is we got Hebrew and Greek and, and the Catholics went and chose to speak in Latin and in their church services. And, and uh, we have, you know, in New Guinea, what do they speak in New Guinea, sister? What's the language up there? What is it? Pigeon. Pigeon. There you go. It's pigeon English, right? And then you've got husbands and wives, men and women that all speak different languages one to another. And, uh, you know, I had a man once say to me, I think my wife was speaking in tongues at me. I said, actually, I don't think that was tongues. <laughs> he said, well, she was speaking very rapidly. I went, hmm. <laughs> Would you join me this week in praying that we will take the blinkers off and start reading the Word of God this week, this week. I challenge you, get the Bible, start reading it about Him. 
All those promises in the Bible are not about you. For you, yes, not about you, because they reveal the nature and the character of God. Can you receive that? That way you don't need to claim them because you've already got them. Ah, claim that verse, Lord. Claiming what? You've already got me. Lord, I pray for peace. You've already got peace. Lord, I need you're the God of the breakthrough. Yes, I am. Lord, I really want breakthrough. I thought you said I'm the God of the breakthrough. If you have me, you have breakthrough. So what do I need to pray for? Pray that you will be more righteous. Pray that you will stand faithful in me. Pray for my kingdom to come in you and around about you. Lift your prayer life to where it needs to be, not with what is already done. Do you understand that? It's already done. Join with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, 